in 2001, Microsoft released Windows XP and it became one of the biggest operating systems in use around the world. In 2010, uh, they announced that they were going to put it to end of what they called end of support. Uh, but that has recently changed what they call retirement to focus the shift on the fact that really that product has run its, to its end of life now and it is time for organisations to be thinking about how do we get off this product. They've, they, Microsoft themselves have said people, organisations of a medium size should allow 18 to 32 months to run a migration strategy um, and obviously with just over 200 days to go uh, there is now a time for organisations that haven't yet thought about it to start thinking, okay, what do we do to get off XP? Why do you have to get off XP? Um, you don't have to. It's not like the Y2K problem. There's not a ticking time bomb, although people will use the 8th of April uh, 2014 as the kind of end date. Nothing's going to stop working at that point. It just becomes a, a few reasons, like a risk appetite as to whether you want to keep using the product um, after that date. So companies need to think about things like malware attacks and viruses and security breaches in what is a fundamental part of their IT infrastructure. But also there are other reasons why you might want to think about moving from XP. As an example, uh, as organisations move some services to the cloud, um, you might find that Internet Explorer or other browsers are no longer supported on your operating system, Windows XP, um, which will mean you that starts to stifle your ability to be innovative as a business. And that's why you've got to start thinking now about what you need to do to move away from Windows XP and from that barrier. Now, it might be that 80% of your business, 90% of a business um, has already moved away, but there could be significant kind of key roles left that are running Windows XP. Uh, as an example, a client I saw recently uh, has moved entirely away from Windows XP apart from a number of key units, uh, key PCs in each of their businesses that handle all their credit card transactions. So that's one of the most fundamental risk areas for the Windows XP problem is data protection and all that. And that the one thing they've left is arguably the most important thing that's left in their business. So what they should be doing now, or what any organisation should be doing, is identifying where Windows XP is left in their business and what they have to do to migrate away from that. Some of it could be really easy. So in our, in our experience, 2% of applications have been a problem and can't just go from XP to Windows 7 or Windows 8, whatever the next kind of step is. Um, however, you still have to think about it and you still have to work out the logistics of doing it, the user training elements and all those kind of things. So. The, the actual on the ground effort, you can really minimise if you get the, the thought right at the right at the beginning and at the front. One of the things you have to do as an organisation is understand not only kind of where you are today, but where you want to get to as a business, what your sort of IT strategy is and what the business strategy is aligned to that. So for example, if you want to put some services into the cloud, um, then w will your will your operating system on your PCs and your laptops support that transition to the cloud? And it sounds like that might be a bit of a disjoint, but as one example, Office 365, which is a very big branded, well-known cloud platform for lots of services, Microsoft themselves have now dropped support for Windows XP, and that's 200 days before um, the actual deadline of XP. So if you're on Office 365, you are unsupported by Microsoft running it on Windows XP. I think it's, a, it's an interesting choice as to which version of Windows you should go to as the next option for you if you're when you migrate from Windows XP. So the, the obvious choice and the, the big marketing push at the minute that a, a normal consumer would see or in their home life would be Windows 8. Uh, but that's quite a difficult proposition for a business to go to for, for a number of reasons. Um, the first reason is Windows 8 as it stands today will be retired in two years time and will, will be replaced with Windows 8.1 which is only out in October, so in an, over a month's time. So you, th there's nowhere to go right now unless you want to do all the work again in 18 months' time and move to another version of Windows effectively with a, a change in operating system. The kind of the safe bet is to go for Windows 7. Windows 7 supported fully by Microsoft for another seven years all the way into 2020. Uh, all of the applications that are there will, will run on it. If you've got a PC that you've bought in the last four years, then it will run Windows 7. Well, it's probably been sold with Windows 7, so you haven't got any licensing constraints. PCs that are seven or eight years old will run Windows 7, no problem, so it reduces your capital expenditure. If, you, if you're kind of thinking, oh, I need lots of new PCs and uh, lots of spend on licenses, and that we don't have to do that. Again, a client I was with, 
uh, the other day. They had a plan for 750 new PCs to purchase, but actually when we looked at what they had and, and a slightly smarter way of approaching the problem, they only needed 40 new PCs, which made the kind of the big headache and the capital expenditure just go away because 40 PCs was in their annual refresh budget anyway. So they were able to just transition straight to Windows 7 on their existing PCs with a small capital outlay. I think whether you choose Windows 7 or Windows 8, I think the key is that you make a choice right now and you, you go for it.